C.J. Stroud has played the best quarterback in the NFL this season. Yes, he's been that good, and I said it. Go argue in a cave with your echo. That's hilarious. Could become first rookie to win MVP since Jim Brown in 1957. We're talking history making. Dan, we might have discussed this subject on Thursday with Kimberly Martin and and Stephen A. Is Stroud the leading MVP candidate? Lots changed in a week, huh? Um, So, uh, last week I came on and I was like, listen, C.J. Stroud is firmly in the MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. And you guys, Stephen A. and Shannon, said, stay off the weed. No, it was me. It was me. It was me. I I was wrong. I was was wrong. I got to give you guys your flowers on that. I was wrong. Because he's leading the MVP race after this weekend. He is the leader. And both you guys said I was crazy last week, and you couldn't put a rookie into that conversation. And then there were other guys, and and the, the team record mattered. And I was trying to tell everybody, like, the number two pick has got a team that was 4-4, four and four, now 5-4. and four. And he goes on the road against Cincinnati, and he does to Joe Burrow and the Bengals what Joe Burrow has done to basically everybody in the AFC over the last three years. And if we took away the fact that the team is 5-4 and four and in second place in the division, and if we took away the fact that he was a rookie and we just put his name, or took away his name, and we put the stats and the performance next to a Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes, a Lamar Jackson, a Justin Herbert, a Dak Prescott, a Jalen Hurts, everyone would say, well, that guy's the, the, the leader right now with the MVP. But since he's 5-4, and four, he's not. Last week, he was in the race. As of today, C.J. Stroud is the, the, the favorite to win the MVP, and you're going to have to go take it from him. Shannon, let me chime in here before you go. go. Ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. First of all, Let's, you were right about certain things, but don't misrepresent somebody else's position just in your zest to be right on occasion. Okay. Don't sit up there. <laughs> what did I but misrepresent? I said, listen, nobody, but you're acting like people question what we clearly see is a level of greatness from this rookie. Nobody was questioning that. I mean, you, you, listen, we, what I pointed out was that an NFL rookie hasn't won league MVP since 1957, since sure. Jim Brown did it. So it hasn't received a vote since, you know, uh, Edgar and James did it in 1998-99, I believe. I mean, Dan Marino was the last quarterback to be a rookie and to receive a vote. We get that part, okay? We're seeing what we're seeing. What I was saying with C.J. Stroud was 4-4, four and four. and if you're an average team and you're on the outside looking in, you're a sub-500 team, you ain't going to get MVP honors, particularly as a rookie, so just throw that out aside. Here's why you're right today and why everything's changed. They could win this division. Yeah. They could win this division. Okay. They already bum-rushed Jacksonville in Jacksonville 37-17 to 17 in week three. They got them again in two weeks. You win that game, you're clearly in the lead for the division with two victories over Jacksonville within your own division. And so when I look at it from that perspective, and then I look at what we've seen him do, being on the field, playing the way that he played, two lost fumbles, an interception, and still for the second straight week, lead a comeback, game-winning drive. This brother is something special. And if I'm Carolina, I'm sick to my stomach right now because obviously I'm not even blaming Bryce Young because of what he has around him. But my goodness, to see what this kid is doing in Houston. Right now, here's the one thing that we can say definitively, Shannon, Dio. The rookie of the year and the coach of the year are clearly in Houston. Yes. Are clearly in Houston. Yes. It's it, 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 a, a miracle in some I, I don't think. I, I don't think the, the coach of the year is a lock right now. Okay. I think, I, I think he's he, in the lead. Absolutely. He's in a considerable Kevin lead. Kevin O'Connell from Stroud Minnesota has got to be. I think Stroud is a lot. Yes. But go ahead, Shannon. I'm going to give it to you all. I'm going to say Can you just one more time say sure. that I was right? You were right. Okay. And I noticed something. I, I mean, you should be saying this about me every week with you, <sighs> but you don't. But Dan, I'm more humble than trends. you. I'm more humble than him, Shannon. So I will say that Dan Olavsky was right, but again, my trepidation wasn't about his skill set in this production. Okay. It's about the fact that he's a rookie and I thought that, listen, you're going to have a losing record. No, you're not going to get it. But Houston's not going to have a losing record. These brothers going to win some games. Yeah. I agree I agree with both uh, both of you guys said. He's top 10 in pass. He's top 10 in passing yards, touchdowns, QBR, and quarterback rating. He's only thrown two, t- uh, two interceptions yeah. with 15 touchdowns. And let me tell you why. Even if he doesn't, even if they don't win the division, if they make the playoffs, think about this. They were 11, 38, and 1 over the last three seasons. He gets this team into the playoffs. How do you not give him the MVP? Considering 
He, Cam Newton, and, and Andrew Luck are the only three rookie quarterbacks to pass for over 350 yards on three occasions. They did it over 16 games. He's done it through the first nine weeks of the season. Yeah. Do we understand how impressive normally rookie quarterbacks come in and the ones that play well? We look at Dak Prescott. Zeke Elliott led the league in rushing. We look at Andrew Luck. Guess who he had? He had Reggie Wayne to throw to. Cam Newton has Steve Smith to throw to. Now, I'm not saying Noah, Br Noah Brown has shown me a lot since he's been in Houston as opposed to when he was in Dallas. Nico Collins and Tony Dale, they're really good. But I don't think anybody thinks they're Reggie Wayne and Steve Smith just yet. And they're letting him throw the ball down the field, Dio. This ain't no dinking and dunking. This ain't no jailbreak screen. This is not run the ball on first and second down, and then we'll let you throw it on third down. He's throwing it. He's checking off. He's better than advertised. He's played through the first nine weeks of the season. I'm not saying he's the best quarterback, but he's played the position better no, than right. Luck, excuse me, better than Burrow, better than Patrick Mahomes, better than Dak, better than Jalen Hurts, mm -hmm. and he's a rookie. He's absolutely right now. He should be the favorite. At five and four, as you mentioned, that Stephen A. They've already beat Jacksonville, and we saw Jacksonville get the demolition job done on them. That's right. If they win the division, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's if a he no keeps brainer. Playing like he's playing. It's a no-brainer. And Shannon knows this, great quarterbacks, elite quarterbacks, elevating quarterbacks, they're great problem solvers. Right. And I think that's one of these things where maybe some people, like, lost out on the draft. And I know Lewis had him as the number one guy. He's an elite problem solver. And think about it in this context, because this is why, and I think it's a good conversation of, like, for MVP for you guys, does it have to be a great team? Because my, my vantage point no, is I this. No, I just thought they have to be a winning team. Okay, so it's got to be a team. mattering team. It's got to be matters. a mattering yes. team. Not great, yes. but they got to matter. In two yes. months, in two months, the narrative around Houston has completely changed. Without question. And that, to me, like, that's why I sit here and I go, uh, that's, that's well, the Shannon, MVP. Well, Shannon, here's, and, and, and remember, you were on the air with me last year. Shannon, he, wasn't, he was on the air with me last year. Obviously, you weren't when we, I was talking about the Houston Texans as an organization, Shannon. And I thought, considering what they did to the two previous black coaches, one and out, I thought it was an absolute disgrace. I thought that they, I, 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 to me, I, I, I was hesitant. I, was, I said, D'Amico, Ryan, get your money, get your years or whatever. You can't trust this organization. But we have to stand down now. Because to draft C.J. Stroud, to draft the move up, get Will Anderson as well. So you got a cap, you, you got an Dell. elite person, exactly. But you got an elite person on offense, an elite person on defense. You know your head coach preceded all of that. You winning on all cylinders. You got to give the Houston Texans finally got something right in a very, very, very big way, Shannon. The last two weeks, you look at what he did. In 46 seconds, he went down and got the game-winning touchdown, and he only needed 40 seconds to get it done. In this week, he goes on the road in the jungle. That's what they call the, uh, the Bengals Stadium. They call yeah. it the jungle. It's rowdy. He looks across the field. He knows who's standing on the opposing sideline is one Joe Burrow, and he's not in awe. A lot of times when you see mm. these guys, I remember when I first got in the league and I looked across the field and I'm looking at these other guys, I'm like, oh, man, that's you-know-who. That's a oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. He's, he's not impressed. He understands who they are, what they represent. He says, but why can't I be that? Yeah. Why can't I be the guy that's on the other side that they're looking across the field in awe of me? He's been very, very impressive. And I've seen a lot of quarterbacks in my 30-plus years of being in the league and covering the league. It's hard for me to say that I've seen one since I came in the league in 1990 being any more impressive through the first nine weeks than one C.J. Stroud. No, you're right. The mindset. He just has the attitude like, I'm statement. built for this. He's like yeah. a run into the burning building type of guy. Run, you, you know, like he throws that interception late in the game. It's a ten-point game. Game's basically right. over. But the, re the reason over. why I think, but the reason why I think that what Shannon says is is really, really significant. That's huge. Here. And what he just said is because we've seen the Lamar Jacksons of the world and others come into the league and take it by storm. Yeah. But not like this in terms of being stepping in the mm -hmm. pocket and throwing the football the way this rookie is throwing point. the football. It's not the run around athleticism. It's not the, it's not the dual threat. This brother's flinging the football. Absolutely. Ice water in his veins. He's the first hey, rookie Molly. to lead the NFL. Real quick, Shannon, in pass Wait. yards per game. First rookie ever through week 10. Yep, go ahead, Shannon. 
Dale, I'm not so sure that interception when he had a 10-point lead is his fault because it looks like Dale is running the shallow cross and he starts right. to climb. And you know if you run the shallow cross and you climb, that DB yeah. going to jet it, which means he's right. going to undercut it. And that's exactly what he did.